So first of all, we would like to ask, and it's uh, totally okay to not answer our questions. Uh, we would like to ask if it's possible to ask about your uh, past projects in Ubisoft, because it's almost nine years uh, since you have left, if I'm correct. Yeah, yes, it's true. Do you still play Assassin's Creed games? No, I haven't played any Assassin's Creed games since the third one that I played for two hours. And then I quit because I was working instead of having fun. How do you mean it? By, because working. I was the guy who was calling the shots for uh, seven years on yes. Assassin's Creed games. And then suddenly I couldn't do anything. And the game was finished. And I was like, and I was, it was still fresh when I played because it was 2012, right? When AC3 yeah. yeah. came out. So I was like, and I was like, why this and should be like that? And I'm like, I have no fun. And then I said, okay, enough. So and I haven't touched any Assassin's Creed game since. And so I cannot talk about what they're doing, how it is these days, and have no opinion. Yeah. It's, so it's their thing, they do what they want. I couldn't care less. Does, is it the, the experience too painful for you to It to was, try I guess. It, yeah. it was a bit painful also because, uh, yeah, because I, 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 even though I have no f real regrets, I was like, oh, I left it. I left the baby, but it's okay. I've, at the same time, like I said, they do what they want. It's their license. It's their IP. It's, it's not mine, and it's okay. I'm, uh, I've moved on. I, I made. Uh, I didn't ship any game, but I worked on game, and I. And personally, I like the process of making a game. Shipping it is the nerve part, nerve wracking part of of the process, because then suddenly you will have. Uh, comments you will you will give me your opinions and somehow it's a for me it's always a personal object that I give to people uh, even though I'm trying to be as, as shielded as possible it's always a bit uh, it affects me more than I, I, I would have liked but it, that's life and so uh, yeah but you're right that it's been uh, nine years since I left and it's been ten years since I shipped the game, my last game was uh, that I shipped was Assassin's Creed 2. So, uh, okay, but uh, it's coming, it's coming. My next one is there. It's yeah, done. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the real. Let's talk about Ancestors, the game you probably shipped. Uh, where uh, the uh, main idea were born? Uh, is, it, is it somehow, somehow linked with uh, the way how you developed uh, Assassin's Creed? I mean, the, the, the idea about uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, I mean, yes, really because 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 it's a game I made. So I know the, in 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 the process of making a game, uh, I know what I need at first, and what I needed at, at first in my new studio, Panache, was I needed a third-person character that can interact interact with the 3D world. This is the first thing you need to, at least in the game that I like to make, is this. You need to build that. You need to second-to-second -second gameplay. It needs to be fun and you need to, to do it. And then you can build on top and create other games or big, or even that game to make it bigger. So uh, when uh, Jeff Boivin and myself started Panage, I said, okay, that's what we need. And at first I pitched a game idea that was really, really like bland, just a character in a 3D world. Think of a human fall flat mm -hmm. type of like, but in the Patrice Desilet way, not just about physics, but just really this time of game world. And then I, I pitched that to a, a VC somewhere uh, in Israel, which is funny. Yeah. You know, the, the loop. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, I said, yeah, it's like I, we understand, but where's Assassin's Creed? <laughs> where's uh, the historical character? And I went like, yeah, he's right. He's wrong because I still need that first thing, but he's right that I need to come up with a, a setting. And then what's night at my place, like a week after that trip, went like, oh, prehistorical time. Because in prehistory, that's all we had, us, a body and a, an environment, right? So I would not have to build a city. I would not have to build crowds. I would not have to build technologies and sword fights. That's off. So I, could, I can concentrate on making that character in a 3D world, but in an historical setting. I thought it would be easier. 
but uh, it was really naive because making a believable organic world is not easier to make. But I still don't have a city, a crowd, and everything else to build. So at the end of the day, it is easier. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have to build up dialogues. So yep. I don't have to record, I don't have to do casting, I don't have to do translation, even though the game will be in multiple language, but not when the character speaks, because they don't speak. So, uh, so this is how it, 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 it all started in the end. It's this, 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 the game designer in me, who's now president of a company, saying, okay, what is the first thing I need to build in order to have success is this? And then someone said, yep, but you're the historical guy. And then I found the right time period to do both. And then here we are four years later and the game's almost done. Woo, that was a good answer and a long one. <laughs> Ancestors is a game about evolution, about yeah. experience evolution. Uh, can we evade as gamers that uh, throughout the gameplay, that throughout the eras, the gameplay will change or evolve as well as the as the persons in, in game? Well, I first, I don't want to spoil anything. Okay. No, but it's true. It's really that that was a bit when I said at the very beginning, the game is the talking and me explaining all the system. At the end, I feel like I'm removing the real pleasure of ancestors. The not knowing, the not having a map, the, 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 the not telling you, please go there, do this, is because doing it by yourself is fun. Once you, okay, that's the way the game works. Once you understand or, or accept that, this is the, you'll have epiphany moment because you'll go, okay, how do I get rid of my problem? And then what if I do, and then it works. It's not because I told you, you, and then you'll be, holy fuck, yeah, cool. <laughs> and then I'll, you'll do it again. Through the course of the game, you will evolve in through different species. You'll receive abilities according to this species. So it will evolve. Will it be totally different at the end? You still play as a, as a hominid from beginning to end. It's not because you said it's about evolution. Yes, but it's about human evolution. It's not about biology. You'll not have a third, you know, leg eventually. That's not how it works. It's still about, but then the more you play, the more you realize that, you know, I said that in, in the talk that the, the inventory is two ends, but that's not really true. I mean, eventually you can give object to your buddies and then suddenly you realize that, oh, they all have two ends. So then you multiply your objects in your inventory and blah, 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 and then, but see, now I'm saying too much because you would have thought it by yourself and then someone's like, oh, that's true, I'm, I play a clam. I, did, I didn't switch between characters and I should have, but you, you play one character, but you can switch it on the other one and then also you can develop your communication and say, okay, come here, guys, and then eventually they follow you and uh, so it's a different, that's different, I guess. But you, you can do it from the start. And then you get good, good at it. Yeah. You can actually be a really good player of Ancestors. <laughs> Not saying it's like a sports game, but it is like a sports game. But everybody can play FIFA, but some, some people are freakingly good at FIFA. Well, you can be really, really good at Ancestors. More so than my, the game I did in my past. Everybody was the same prince, running on the same wall, doing the same thing, because that was the game. And I was asking you, could you, can you go on the other side of that wall, of the hole? Now it's like, it's not clear where is the hole, where's the wall. And even in the control scheme, you have control over the character when he jumps. So hair control. And then you all, and you make decisions. So it's like, it's totally different. And it's not about the, the level design is all organic. Everything is there. But it's up to you to figure it out, not me. I'm not helping you out this time. But every time that you play, and if you have a Twitch account, and it's like, I can come see what we're going to try to do tonight. And suddenly you'll go through the, to the, to the savannah because there's more than a jungle also in the game. It's about traveling, it's about being curious, it's about being creative. So yeah. Okay, it sounds almost magical, you know, like... Uh, it is a bit magical. I'm still having a blast playing my game. But again, it's not like at the end of the day you'll be in Ancestors Volume 1 sailing and, you know, having yeah. battles. It's still 
So you could say, well, it's a bit the same. Yes and no. Because every single moment you'll play that game is a unique moment that nobody have actually played before. Because you have to be there at the right time while maybe or not the predator was also there. Like, I was surprised today when the two animals went like, whoa, and I'm like, oh, fuck, not the fuck. Well, I was not expecting that to happen in front of you, but it happened. And we're kind of like, okay. You didn't know, but there is this system of like infighting between animals and you can play with it. How difficult it was to uh, build such, such a game that uh, you can you know, like experience everything? Not everything. Oh. It's uniqueness that you can okay. experiment. Not everything. Okay. It's not about building a fort at the end of the day. But each time, you, you, it's, it'll be your experience and his experience. And you can compare and say, oh, oh, you, you, went, you went left? Oh, sorry. You went left? I went right. I discovered ABC, this thing, and this landmark. And you said, no, I went on the other side. And there was this thing over here. So, oh, maybe I'll go and then say, oh, no, I got lost. And then suddenly I discovered a lake. <laughs> and then there was a cave. And then I went into a cave. Ah, I didn't go there at all. And see, and that's the beauty of it. Because you won't know. I understand that you don't want to reveal too much. But uh, still, I want to ask, uh, do we understand it properly that uh, you will play for more than one character throughout the game? And if my character, my first character, for example, dies, so another character will born? No. You play with your clan. It's a really, there's a social aspect with the NPCs that I haven't touched today. I didn't have time. I was like, I showed you a bit of like, and, and I just played, by the way. It's not like I had a, like a scenario to teach you, to show you. I was, I was on stage with you guys and I just played. It's, you, you, it was a unique experience. They're always different anyway, except the beginning, the little missions that you have to do. But, uh, and eventually you make babies. If you're, right now you start the game with a clan of eight characters. So kind of like eight lives. So if you die, you switch into mm. another character. And eventually the first character you will play with, we're going through millions of years. Eventually it'll be gone, man. But your lineage is what? will remain and so it's not about one guy or girl it's not about the hero the hero of humanity was a clan it was not one person there was a, a talk before me a ccp guy he said like that the, the thing that kills us the most is being alone is not bad food is not not moving enough is being alone because we're social. So you play as a clan and that clan, you want it to survive. Dying once, it's part of life. You switch and then, but eventually you have to make babies. And eventually you'll change species that comes with new abilities and eventually you'll be the last species of it all that we've put in volume one and say, see you next time. Are you afraid that uh, people won't get it? Because, you know, from your perspective, from your point of view as a designer of the game, uh, the game, as I said, sounds quite magical, but uh, players, I don't want to be like, uh, to, to, to bet to them, but uh, they are quite uh, simple. They just know the game that everything is said, and yeah, you need to go there and do this. Yeah. And in your game, there is, as you said, no, no, but no, no, I mean like no, no goal. Yeah. There is. There is the one you want to give yourself. Okay. Am I afraid? At the end of the day, the beauty is that I didn't ask for three hundred billion dollars to make that game, so I don't need to sell to the entire seven billion population of this planet to make a dime. Okay, if thirty-five people doesn't cost the same as eight hundred. So first. Am I afraid? No, I think the people who will actually get it, they will get it for real. I think gamers, some gamers, will have to go in through a detox <laughs> before they can actually get it. But it lasts 15 minutes for some. Some will take maybe an hour, but it looks good. It plays well. You'll die a lot. 
So for gamers who like to die a lot, you have to survive, everything is in there. The only thing I didn't give you is objectives, precise objectives. Because survival and evolution is not about being precise. And I'm, am I afraid? No, because otherwise I would not do anything because, like I said, some people don't like the Beatles. You cannot be afraid of trying something new because it defies the purpose somehow. But, but I'm tired of being taken by the hand all the time, personally. Yeah. So at least you may not like it. With the, but you know what I experimented also with, the, with some people who came and, and played it? Is that, yes, some gamers were like, but people who play less, they get it way faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they, they don't go like crazy running in the jungle. And then say, like, oh, I, I got killed. Well, you went running in the jungle. Would you run yeah. without pre preparing yourself running in it? No, you would, you know, you would die pretty soon. So it's a bit the same. And a non gamer will go like, okay, how does it work? Ooh, I'm afraid I'm coming back and then I'll know a little bit more. And then eventually, and eventually, and eventually. And, and, but I'm not that afraid in life. Otherwise, I would have not started a company, leave a big studio, blah, 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 blah. And, 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 and you know, what's funny though, this experience going through human evolution, we have it in our DNA. We kind of get it somehow. It's a bit, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost a, a wink on Assassin's Creed. It's genetic memory somehow. There's real instinct that kicks in and it works at the end. If you compare the first idea of Ancestors, the concept, and the final game, uh, how close they are? They're, the first design is really not the same, but the first concept, the first idea, the glimpse, it's, it's what you saw. I, said, I want to play that ape that came down the tree and stood up. That's roughly what we, you saw, and then, and then we made a big map, and eventually you'll go in different regions that in your mind is sound, looks sound like Africa, and that's, and that's the goal. And so it's pretty close, but the design before we got there, I showed it, it changed a lot, and that's totally fine. It's, 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 it's part of the process of making anything creative. You said, sorry, yeah. uh, you said the game is almost done. Yeah. Uh, how done it is. <laughs> Almost and, better. Okay. And uh, I know that uh, you are here currently in, uh, in Dubrovnik, but uh, the team is working on the game. Oh, the, the game I showed, uh, like I said, was the yeah. build of, uh, of Wednesday night. Okay. Uh, so what did they do? Like the last thing? Uh, oh, they have a list of tasks to do with uh, And plus now we have Jira's. So there's bugs, there's crashes and they're fixing it. And there's like uh, not not a lot of actual features to finish, and in the coming uh, uh, weeks and months, uh, it'll be all about shipping date. Let's do it. We heard after you finished Ancestors that you wish to return to Amsterdam, 1666. Is it true? Uh, for sure, I I fought for it. How how the fight uh, went? Well, I got I got the the actual trademark yeah, back, so yeah. now it belongs to Panache. So 1666 Amsterdam, which is yeah, it's, I'm it's sorry. okay, it's okay. Uh, uh, well, it belongs to us, so we'll do it. Like I said, for me, it's an important game. It's a game about the devil. It's my game about the devil, and I want to make it. And the devil for me. Is, is, is our inner demons. So I find it really interesting as a subject matter. But it's, it is in 1666 in Amsterdam and plus some more. I mean, you don't know what it is, I know. But, uh, and I also said, but now that I have my ancestors, I put the cape on the ape and I can do another game. And so it'll be much easier to do, faster, uh, but I'll revise everything I've done in the past of, about that game because now it's okay. Now, we're like, with my team, with the, what we built, how do we do it? And what are we do actually going to do? 
but the core will remain the same. It's a game about the devil set in 1666 Amsterdam. I feel that uh, you are quite enjoying the fact that the team uh, at Panache is uh, not so big. Uh, are you planning uh, after Ancestors uh, to uh, employ more people? And uh, uh, Our goal is, I yes. Mean, like, you know, Jeff, change, change yeah, Jeff and I, the co-founder, Jeff Boivin, the co-founder uh, of Panache, we, yeah, we, we have a business plan, we have a plan, but it's never been, our, my goal was never been, it's never been to build the biggest studio on this planet. And, and, I'm, and I'm proud and I'm a bit showing off what, we, what you can do with a team of 30s something with a nice technology and a, and a goal and, and let them, them also have fun. And be proud of their and being proud of their work and showing. I think for me it was quite important to say it's not me. I'm doing this because I'm good at doing this, but it's not me. It's them. Me, I'm the conductor, but they're the musician. And I design when it's time to design, but then you put the pizza in the oven, man, and eventually it cooks, and then it's ready, and then you say, oh, here it is. Now they're the one doing the magic. But this is important because then we want to sell some copies to make more money, to make more games. That's it. So, uh, but I like the process of making games. I like to I like to make games with my friends. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing since day one in my career. And I'm the fucking luckiest bastard on this planet because I'm here. I'm in Croatia, and I talk and I do games and. You know, I'm a bit nervous before going to on stage. There's worse in life than this. I could be working in a mine. That's tough. I could be uh, in an hospital. That's tough. Doing games is not tough. It's hard work, but it's not tough. It's a, it's a pure pleasure. But then I need people and we talk.